Shall we all rise up? We came for revival tonight. Yes. And we came to experience the miracles of God in our lives. Yes. And I want you to bow your heads and close your eyes and expect great things to happen in your life. Yes. The Lord is going to do wonderful things tonight. Yes. Already we have heard what he's doing in the lives and bodies and spirits of other people. And he is going to do a definite work in your own life today in Jesus' name. Raise up your voice to the Lord and pray. We thank you because you are Father indeed. Yes. You are the Lord God Almighty, yes. and there is nothing impossible for you. Yes. With man, with the doctor, this might be impossible, but with God, all things are possible. Yes. And when we do believe, when we stand upon your word, we can walk on the water. Yes. The impossible, the impossible yes. will become very possible in our lives. Yes. Sicknesses will go away. Yes. Diseases will vanish away. Enmity yes. will go. Yes. The power of the dead will be destroyed. Yes. Father, we have come tonight because we believe that the living God is still on the throne. Yes. We came tonight because Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. Yes. He's still in our midst. We came tonight because the same Holy Ghost that worked in the life of Jesus Christ that manifested himself in the life of the apostles and what miracles is still alive today. We came tonight because the resurrection power that rolled the stone away, the resurrection power that made Jesus to come out of the grave is still alive today in Jesus' name. We came tonight because we knew that the power that healed the eyes of the blind that unstopped deaf ears, that opened the mouth of those who could not talk, that made the lame to rise up, that woke the dead to come alive. We know that that power is still alive today. And Father, we are praying and we are believing that that power will work today. Mightily in our body, mightily every part of this congregation will feel the move of the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. If there is a particular problem right at the center of your head, quietness everybody, right at the center of your head. Sometimes it makes you so dizzy that uh, you have a feeling of a slight insanity, but you can control yourself. You just um, put your hand on that center of the head right now, it will go. Yeah. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, by your mighty power, I command that that thing that is uh, worrying that other that person in the head, I tell you in the name of Jesus, go away. And I pray that the blood of Jesus Christ will make you totally free now in Jesus' name. You have a problem in your right ear. And it's a sort of pain. Not terrible pain, but uh, you feel the pain is there. It's like a cloud that can be felt. Almost seen, almost something you can touch. Put your hand on that ear, and as we pray, it will go. Father, I thank you because you are the Almighty One. You are the All Sufficient One. And Lord, I pray that that problem in the ear will vanish away right now by the power of the Almighty God in Jesus' name. Something walking up and down on your right leg, like an ant disturbing you and you know it lay your hand on that leg the right leg something like an ant and when you touch it there is no ant but you always have the feeling going up and down father in the name of jesus christ whatever it is that is causing that sensation in the right leg i remove it i come against it go away in jesus name I pray that you will set all these people free completely right now in Jesus' name. As somebody that has a broken heart, very, very sorrowful because of your wife. The Lord will wipe all your tears away. He will remove the suffering and the sorrow. 
So if that is you, raise up your hand where you are. You have a broken heart. Broken heart. Broken heart. It's a deep, deep sorrow. It's on the deep level of your heart. And it's so deep you can't even weep about it. But you feel it and you know it. And it is because of your wife, particularly. And you are believing the Lord tonight. You are relying upon the Lord tonight. Father, you are the one that instituted marriage. And it's only by your power that the marriage can be kept together. You are the God of love and the God of wisdom and the God of power. In your love, you manifest your power. In your power, your love is radiated through into a human relationship. And Father, I pray that the pain in the hearts of these beloved precious fellows, because of the problem in their home, because of their wives. Now, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, the great comforter, Lord Jesus, we know that your name is wonderful. Your name is Counselor. You are the mighty God. You are the everlasting Father. And you are the Prince of Peace. Where there has been no peace, put in your peace in Jesus' name. And Father, I pray, whatever it is that is causing that woman to be wayward, whatever it is that is happening to that wife that brings sorrow upon the husband, Father, I pray right now that mountain will be moved away in Jesus' name. And I pray, Lord, that that family will experience the peace of God and the power of God. And the life of God will come into that family in Jesus' name. Father, I pray that whatever the devil has been doing, ruining the peace of that world, now you devil will come against you in the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. By the sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ, be removed and go away in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you because I know you have answered. Now, there's a sister there. If you are determined to keep on worrying, why have you come here to pray? Even while we're singing choruses, you keep on worrying. While we're praying, you keep on worrying. And you don't hear everything that we say up here while we're praying or while we're talking. Because your mind is always wondering. You worry so much. That when even when you hear the promises of God, it doesn't register upon your heart. So if you are that one and you want to be free, you want to roll all your cares upon God, raise up your hand and let's pray for you. You worry so much that you don't hear everything that is said. Why take thought for your life? Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. God loves you. Yes, He loves you. And He says, So cast your cares upon Him, for He careth for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we love you. You care about everybody. And there is nobody that is small or insignificant in your sight. You love everyone like you love Jesus Christ. It is not your will that anybody should perish, but that all should come into eternal life and come to repentance. And therefore, Father, these people who are raising up their hands because they worry and worry and worry. Yes, until in that particular case, that individual has high blood pressure. Always restless. A little sound in the night will disturb her sleep. Father, I ask that from this very moment, she will cast all her cares upon you in Jesus' name. And all the anxiety, all the worry will vanish away in Jesus' name. When you were very young, your parents just neglected you. And since that time you felt that nobody else will ever love you. And whenever you remember your parents, the mixture of fear and pain and sorrow will turn in your heart. 
You don't love them. Well, because you've heard the message a number of times, you try to love them. You try to say, okay, I'll pray for them. But actually, because of the childhood neglect, you're bitter against them. And you try to repress or press down the bitterness. And you can't trust anybody, even your manager in the place of work. You'll be so disappointed early in life that you just feel that there's no use trusting anybody. And you have no friend. Yes, you have some little, some people who move with you and you move with them. But you never tell them your mind because you never trust anybody. It started right from the time your mother, your father neglected you. And it makes you worry and worry and worry and worry so much. But you will be delivered. You will be set free. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father. Loving Father. That will never disappoint anyone. In the name of Jesus. That balm of Gilead. Apply to every heart. Take all anxiety away. Take all the worry away. Take all the bitterness away. The hardness of heart. That doesn't care whether mama dies. That doesn't care. Even if they report from home that there's something happening to the father. The natural father. Because of the resentment and the bitterness and the neglect of youth in these people. And therefore there is no friend. They don't trust anybody. They don't move with anybody. They don't have anyone to trust. Anyone to even confide in here on earth. Lord, I pray that this very moment. That thing will be lifted away from their hearts in Jesus' name. And they will be free. Free. Amen. Free as the son that has set up. Father, I pray that you continue to do your mighty work here tonight. Amen. As we read the scriptures, open our eyes. Amen. Encourage our faith. Amen. Touch us where we're hurting. Amen. Touch us where we need healing. Amen. Touch us where we need the peace of God. Amen. Touch us at the point of our need. Father, I pray that every care will be rolled upon you tonight. And every stone that is hiding people in the tomb of defeat will be rolled away. And the resurrection power of the Lord Jesus Christ will come into every life and come into the body. And come into the spirit of everyone. And we shall be free and free and free indeed. Thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's be seated. Matthew chapter 9, verses 27, 28, 29, and the first part of verse 30. Matthew chapter 9, verses 27, 28, 29, and the first part of verse 30. And when Jesus departed thence, two blind men followed him, crying, and saying, Thou son of David, have mercy on us. And when he was coming to the house, the blind men came to him, and said unto them, Jesus says unto them, Believe ye that I am able to do this? That's the question we're asking tonight. Believe ye that I am able to do this? That's the question that Jesus is asking tonight as he's here, sitting by your side. Believe ye that I'm able to do this? While well, the thoughts are going on in your mind, as to how many places you have gone, as to how long the trouble has remained, as to how constant the trouble has been, as to how intense the problem had been, how great the mountain had been. This is the question that the Lord is asking you tonight. Believe ye that I am able to do this? They said unto him, Yea, Lord. Yes, Lord. 
Certainly, Lord, you can. Surely, Lord, if all men fail, you cannot fail. Surely, certainly, obviously, you can do it. You are the light of the world. And our darkness can go away. You can touch our eyes. And we can see. Then touched he their eyes. Saying. According to your face. Be it unto you. And their eyes. Were opened. That is the power. Of the Lord. But before that power. Is manifested. Before the Lord touches you. Where you ache, where you hurt, where you need healing, where you need comfort. Before the Lord touches you in your spirit, in your soul, in your body. Before the Lord touches your family, your children, your wife. Before the Lord touches your business. And then he builds up again what is crumbling and falling and going away. He will ask you the question, believe ye that I'm able to do this? And if you will say, oh yes, Lord, I believe, then he'll touch you. And then he will speak unto you and he will deliver you. Faith is so important. Believing God is so important. And somebody has said, praying without acting is hypocrisy. And yet acting without praying is arrogance it is pride to pray and pray and pray without ever manifesting the action of faith is all hypocrisy it doesn't work it is not the biblical faith and yet to act without prayer means arrogance it means that you think you can do it yourself you can help yourself and therefore you keep on acting and trying and endeavoring to change your circumstances without ever praying or depending upon the Lord. And it doesn't work but prayer and action. Action and prayer must all go together. The faith must lead us to do something in accordance with the promises of God. Our faith in the promises of God must remove us from the realm of doubt and unbelief. And then we must rise up and stand on the promises of God and quit sitting in the premises of our problems. I'll show you some examples of people that had to manifest that faith. And as I show you, I'm encouraging you tonight because the Lord has confirmed that He's going to do wonders tonight. And as we look into the Word of God, We've seen the basis whereby God will work. And if nothing has happened in your own life, in your own body, and you say, well, I can't understand, I believe you'll understand tonight. And when you understand, you'll be able to do what is necessary to make your faith work. The faith that matters is the faith that works. The faith that doesn't have miracles. The faith that doesn't possess the possession. Claim the promises of God. The faith that brings no salvation, no healing. is no faith. But the faith that works. The faith that gets you the salvation. The faith that gets you the healing. That is the faith you should be interested in. In Mark chapter 5 from verse 35. Mark chapter 5. From verse 35, while he yet spake, there came from the ruler of the synagogue's house certain which said, Thy daughter is dead. Why troublest thou the master any further? Your, ma your child is dead. Why continue to pray? Why not accept defeat? And if there is anything you find in the heart of a man that is manifesting faith, it is a condition, it is a principle, it is a decision. I will never accept defeat. The night may be black. The sea may overflow. The roars of the storm may be deafening. The situation may look impossible. The adversary may be running up and down. The enemy, the devil, may be seeking to devour. I may be rolling on the ground, on the bed for pain. It may look that everything is gone. But 
This is my decision. I will never accept defeat. Yes, the sickness may be there. But the healer is also near. The darkness may all encompass the man. But the light of the world is not far away. It may look like that death has come into that house. But the one who has said I am the life and the resurrection is still near. He is the one that can roll the stone away. He is the one that can shout again, Lazarus, come forth, and it will be so. But these people, unbelievers and doubters, they wanted the ruler of the synagogue himself to doubt. And they told him, we have stopped praying. You stop too. And you know there are many people like that. Why pray any longer? We have stopped. Why go to that place anymore? We were going before, but we have stopped. Why seek the master? Why troublest thou the master? Why expecting that he will do something? The child is dead. The impossible has happened. Death has come into the house. And death, death thought, was greater than the Lord Jesus Christ. But nothing is greater than Jesus. Your mountain is not as big as Jesus. Your problem is not as serious as Jesus. As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he says unto the ruler of the synagogue, Be not afraid, only believe. Be not afraid. There is a constant battle going on. Fear, faith. And they are wrestling. And you can see both of them wrestling in your heart. When you come in here, you have faith. When you come in here, your faith, like a little child, is being fed with the word of God. And that faith of yours is growing and growing and growing and growing. While the courses are going on, while the testimonies are being spoken out, your faith is growing. But fear had been boasting and bragging on the field of battle like Goliath and fear has been saying oh no that faith is a small faith that I, I will crush I will step upon and when you are the battleground that in your mind both faith and fear both fear and faith are struggling and they are in the battle but you know even though your faith may look like little David and your fear may look like giant Goliath. That little David of faith. With the little stone of the promise of God. Will strike at the giant fear in your heart. And your fear will be slain in Jesus name. Amen. And your faith will work. Your faith will stand. Your faith will run. Your faith will destroy every form and every type of fear within you. Do not mind about the bragging of the fear. Do not mind about the Goliath. Do not mind about the doubt. Do not mind about the mountain. But keep on feeding your faith. Encouraging your faith. And your faith like little David will soon put Goliath's fear out of business. And so the Lord told this man. When he was discouraging him. If you listen to the voice of people. If you listen to what people are saying. Or what they are thinking about you. Discouragement will come. Defeat will come. You will stop praying. You will stop calling upon Jesus. You will stop reading the Bible. But when Jesus heard what he said. He said fear not. Be not afraid. Only believe. And that is what we have come to do tonight. Your mind may be wondering. Will this happen or will that not happen? Just keep on hearing the word of God. And your faith will grow. And your faith will destroy everything negative in your heart and in your life. Remain in the light. There is no evil in the light. Remain in the kingdom of God. There is enough power in the kingdom of God to destroy and to defeat all your enemies. And it will be so in Jesus name. Amen. Verse 37. And he suffered no man. He allowed no man to follow him except say Peter and James and John the brother of James and he cometh to the house of the ruler of the synagogue and seeth the tumult and them that wept and wailed greatly why were they weeping they had accepted defeat and when you see anybody weeping there is something that has happened on the inside 
He has accepted that Satan is more powerful than God. He has accepted that death is near, life is far away. He has accepted that the word of God is of none effect. He has accepted that the impossible has happened. He has accepted that Jesus can do nothing. And therefore all those professional weepers, those who are weeping, those who accepted that the final has happened, Jesus Christ came and he drew them all away. And in verse 39, when he was coming, he says unto them, why make ye this ado? And we, you would have gone further if you were praying instead of weeping. You would have gotten hold of the problem if you knelt down instead of weeping. Instead of walking by side, looking at the dead body. If you had looked up and you have said, my help will come from the hills. My help will come from the Lord. Things will become better. If you are positive, if you know that God is able, if you know that with him all things are possible. The damn cell is not dead but sleepeth. And they laughed him to scorn. They said, you think we're fools? You think we don't know what the devil can do? You think we don't know the meaning of death? You think we don't know that this is an impossible case? You think we don't know that the child has gone and will never come back? You think that we don't know that we have lost a child and will never see the child? What do you mean? And they laughed him to scorn. You think that religion can do anything in this case? You think that that God in heaven will be so interested in this little home and little family and the ruler of the synagogue and he will do something and they started laughing him to scorn. You think that we don't know God too? You think we don't know what we're doing and they didn't know what they're doing. Many of the people who think they know what they're doing are totally ignorant. But Jesus Christ knew the word of the Father. He knew that the spirit of life was in him. He knew that the spirit will quicken the life in that child. And in verse 39, the damsel is not dead, but sleepers. Like it's easy to wake up a, a child that is sleeping, so it's easy for the Lord Jesus Christ to wake up the dead. They laughed him to scorn. But when he had put them all out, he took the father and the mother of the damsel. And them that were with him and entered him where the damsel was lying. Listen to the voice of the Son of Man. The voice of authority. The voice of power. And that voice is still sounding today. The devil recognizes that voice. He can hear that voice. When the devil sees Jesus Christ in a particular congregation. And you know Jesus Christ is happiest where his name is exalted. Where his death, burial and resurrection, where they put up. Where it's not man that is the superstar in the place. When it is Jesus that is the center of the meeting, then Jesus is ready and willing to move. And he will act. And I want to tell you tonight, the only one that is exalted in this place is the Lord Jesus Christ. Our attention is focused on him. Our faith is resting upon him. And we see him by our eyes of faith because he says, Where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there in their midst. And Jesus is here tonight. Yes. I believe it. I believe Jesus is here. Yes. I believe Jesus is here. Yes. I believe that Jesus in all his power, in all his authority, in all his light. I believe that that Jesus, the same Jesus that healed the sick, the same Jesus that cast out devil. I believe that Jesus is here tonight. Yes. And wherever he is, the devil trembles. Yes. Wherever the Lord Jesus Christ is exalted, he draws men and women to himself. And when you are drawn to the Lord Jesus Christ, you suddenly leave all your sickness behind. When you are drawn to the Lord Jesus Christ, if you couldn't walk before, you just rise up. Because, you know, Jesus is not down. He is up. And as he draws you to himself, your legs will stretch. And in verse 41, he laughed him to scorn. But when he had put them all out, 
when he had put them all out. When he had put them all out. All the television programs, when you have put them all out. All the newspaper junk, when you have put them all out. All the unbelief that people have told you. Ah, this is what kills one so when you put that all out. All the lies people told you. Ah, you go to deeper life at Bagada. Hmm. When you put that all out. All the fear of man. If my uncle hears that I go there, what will he say? When you put that all out. He put them all out. When you turn in the light, all the darkness must go out. Here we don't fear anyone, any man, any woman. On the other hand, there are people, if they are possessed by the devil, they are afraid of this place because they can see a fire is burning. And the heat of that fire will not allow any nonsense from the devil. And there is no messenger of the devil. There is no messenger of the devil. Not in Nigeria, not in West Africa, not in Africa. That can do anything against the power of the Lord in this place. There is none. Because we don't play with sin. And the Savior doesn't play or joke with us. Because he knows we love him. He knows that we depend upon the word of God. And when we walk, we walk on the head of the defeated foe. Because the Lord Jesus Christ is mighty and is strong within us. But there is one thing we have done. We have put all filthy, worldliness, sin. We have put them all out. And the power of the Lord is ready and willing to move in every one of us. Because we put everything of darkness out. He put everything out. And he went only with the believers. With Peter, with John and with James. Who are your friends when you come to prayer? When you knock at the throne of God. Who is knocking with you? Are they Bible believers? Are they trusting people? Those who know that with God all things are possible. And in verse 41. He took the damsel by the hand and said unto her, Damsel, I say unto thee, Arise! And straightway the damsel arose. The weepers are liars. Those who are weeping for you and are saying, It is all finished. No miracle will come. They are liars. Because Jesus is with you. If Jesus is with you, the resurrection power will move in your life. And it is going to move tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. What are we told in Mark chapter 9? Let's see. Verse 23. Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. If you can believe, all things are possible. To him that believeth. Now, we cannot see the face you have. It doesn't always appear on your face. Whether you are doubting or believing. But you see, there were ways in the word of God. How God knew that somebody was manifesting faith. And let me just run through it. Evidence is that. An individual is depending upon the Lord, is believing the Lord that the Lord will do it, and the Lord will definitely do it. One, a person that is believing after hearing the promise of God will go a long way, take a long journey, and do everything that he ought to do, and he will possess his possession. An example is that is Naaman. He was told, if you go to Samaria to the prophet, to the man of the to the man of God, he will remove your leprosy. And he started a journey immediately. 
And it doesn't matter whether you have a taxi or not, whether you get vehicle or not, whether you have bicycle or not, if you believe as you are coming on Thursday, it doesn't matter where you are living because of the faith. If you have to leave home at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, if you actually believe you are taking the step of faith and you are going the long journey, walking on your feet to come here, and it doesn't matter how late we close, you are saying, as soon as the message is finished, I am going to reach out and get my blessing and you will get your blessing. One, the evidence that a person is manifesting faith when he hears the promise of God. If he has to go a long journey, if he has to dip himself seven times in the river of the blood of Jesus Christ by faith, he will do it and he will get the blessing. Two, if a man is really believing, he will be obedient to what the Lord is telling him. If he's told to be quiet and feel the moving of the Spirit of God upon him, he will be quiet. If he's told to be attentive to the Word of God, he'll be attentive. If he's told to be obedient, he'll be obedient. If he's told to have a shout of praise of the Lord, he'll do it. And he can continue doing that for seven days until the walls of Jericho come down. Because those people believe they went around Jericho. Uh, they went around the walls of Jericho. It was a long journey again, my brother, my sister. Because it was a whole city. It wasn't just a yard. It was a whole city. And they walked, they walked around. They marched around. And they were all silent and attentive to Joshua. Joshua meaning Jehovah saves. Jehovah delivers. Jehovah will give all the need and meet all the need of, the, of their lives. They believed it and they were walking around and around and around and around. Six complete days. That is the evidence of faith. And on the seventh day, while the walls were still standing, they gave a loud shout and the walls came down. But remember, they had to go through seven days. And a man that has faith will come on Thursday. And it will come another Thursday. Come another Thursday. Come another Thursday. And the devil can ask him, You have gone for uh, four Thursdays. Are you healed already? He'll say, Shut up, devil. I'm going around my Jericho walls. He comes a feast Thursday. And the devil says, You have gone five times and nothing has happened. He says, Shut up. I'm still going around my Jericho walls. And the sixth Thursday, he comes. And he hears testimonies. He hears the praises of other children of God. And the devil will say, Now uh, you are just unfortunate. The Lord will never answer you. He says, So no, shut up the devil. I know that my deliverance and my healing is accomplished on the cross of Calvary. This is only the sixth day, and I'm coming again. And then he comes. And on the seventh round, he begins to praise the Lord. The walls may still be there. The sickness may still be there. The torment may still be there. But he begins to praise the Lord. And the Lord comes to inhabit the presence of his children. And all of a sudden, there's a collapse. He makes a noise. And then there is another noise. The noise of the falling of the wall. That's the evidence of faith. To come and come again. And to come again. And to come again. What's another evidence of faith? There was a man that was calling upon the Lord. Oh Lord, have mercy upon me. In Mark chapter 10, we're not reading now, but just listen. And he said, son of David, Jesus, have mercy upon me. They told him, shut up. If he did not believe, he'll shut up. What was the evidence of his faith? He cried the much more. He prayed more. He called upon the Lord more. He came to the Lord. He called upon him. He prayed much. He shouted the prayer. Despite the opposition of the people. My brother, my sister, that is evidence that he was believing. And he was never disappointed. Number four. If it's necessary to climb the tree, a man that believes in the Lord will climb the tree. I remember Zacchaeus. He wanted to see the Lord. His face was reaching out. Oh, wretched man that I am, a publican and a sinner. He needed salvation. Everybody ostracized him. They knew he was a sinner. And he wanted to see the Savior. He wanted to see the person that will take away the sins of his life. And it was difficult to see him. There were obstacles and mountains. Hurdles to be crossed on his way. And he knows that the kingdom of God suffered violence. And the violent take it by force. What did he do? He ran ahead. He climbed on top of a tree. 
and that is it a man that has faith will do something that may look ridiculous in the eyes of other people and he will despise the shame that is the evidence it may look shameful for you as a big man to your colleagues as a businessman to your colleagues to come to such a place like this to sit upon a bench that you cannot rest your back on anything it may look like a well what am i doing here you will despise the shame you'll climb the tree and you will sit on the ground if necessary if you are really manifesting faith say i believe the lord will do it for me and he will do it five remember cornelius the lord sent an angel and told him your prayers have come as a memorial therefore send the person that is called simon peter he will come he will show you the way immediately he sent again they had to go a long journey they didn't uh, mind all the inconveniences always through the word of god was seen when a man has faith there is action the action of faith that goes along with it and it will not come the inconveniences of coming of calling of writing if he has to and then he gathered all the people together he actually believed he believed that when that man of god comes he is going to show us the way of god and the miraculous was going to happen he collected all the people together members of the family and his friends and when you really have faith that god is going to do something you will collect all your members of the family together and all your friends together if you have to hire a bus or hire a taxi to bring them you will do something and you know that immediately you see that man of god it will happen Yesterday I went somewhere. Immediately I got down from the vehicle. Somebody was coming. My eyes caught him. Something whispered within me. This is the chance. Catch that man. You need to talk to him. He saw me. And he said he will be seeing me later. I said no, this is the time. While we were talking, he told me that 30 minutes ago, the Lord showed him that I was preaching. And he was there listening to the preaching. I said, yes, this is the fulfillment. The Lord never makes any mistake. He never uh, does anything that just happens accidentally. And you will do the impossible and what looks unreasonable, like the ten lepers that were told. They were already, the leprosy was upon them. And Jesus said, go and show yourself unto the priest. They believed and they started a long journey again. I'm telling you, when you really have faith in the Lord, it doesn't matter how far the fellowship center is, is to your house, you will come and come and come again. It may look unreasonable for them to have, to have gone, to show themselves to the priests while the leprosy was upon them. But there was an action of faith, obedience to the Lord. And while they were going, the leprosy went away. If you were Jonah in the belly of trouble, will you pray? If you were Jonah, Lord God, in the prison of the fish, would you pray? If you were Jonah, and one hour has gone in the trouble, four hours have gone, and you are in the trouble, 24 hours have gone, three whole days gone, in the trouble, in the bottom of the sea, in the belly of hell, will you pray? This is the evidence of faith. No matter how hot the fire, no matter how intense the heat, no matter how great the problem, no matter how impossible the case may look, a man of faith will pray and he will pray and he will believe my God will deliver me from this situation. Do you have faith? Rise up and let us pray. If thou canst believe all things are possible, be not afraid, only believe. Believe ye that I can do this? If you can say, yes, Lord, I believe, your miracle will strike you immediately now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Talk to the Lord like a person having faith. I believe. I believe. I do believe. I believe the Lord will heal. Your miracle is on the way.